Jones uh, to uh, talk about the new album, Electric Sound, uh, which will be released on September the 7th. September 15th. 15th, sorry, on AFM Records. So um, but thank you very much for, for having us. Yeah, well, thanks for talking <laughs> to me. So, um, first of all, uh, Electric Sound so, uh, will be released uh, a little bit more than months. So, uh, how do you feel about the, this release? Pretty confident. I mean, you know, we wouldn't have put it out if it was bad. We thought it was bad. And from, you know, everybody hearing it, it's been pretty much across the board. It's been received very well. And the teaser song that we put out, Guess Who's Back, we released it in Germany and it went to number one. Mm -hmm. Then it dipped down to number three. And then last week it went back to number one. So we're really happy about it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I just asked you, uh, what about the, the reaction of the public on uh, um, uh, Guess Who's Back and yeah. Good Time? So yeah, yeah, yeah really so good. So good. you're happy with the first, yeah. Uh, yeah, first reaction? Absolutely, We're, we can't complain. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, you said that uh, during the pandemic you changed your way of working because you, you were far away from each other with the band. So for this album, did you, um, did you find your, your way back or did you work uh, differently? How, how it works? Well, when we did Power Trio, the last album from 2021, we were in lockdown. So mm -hmm. a lot of the time songs were written, sending files back and forth. And what that taught us was we don't even have to live in the same city to be in a band. Mm -hmm. So JC moved to Finland. Rich, our drummer, he moved to another province in mm -hmm. Canada, which is like on the other side of the country. And we wrote this album. And we wrote it and we separately. We recorded it separately. But then when it came time to put it all together, it kind of made sense. So, yeah, it was a power trio. The pandemic taught us that we could do this apart from one another. Okay. And how it works, you, you begin to work something, to, yeah. to, to write something, or how, how, it, how, how do you do this? So the process of writing songs is, I will come up with some riffs, maybe I'll have a, a vocal melody, mm -hmm. maybe it's a verse and a chorus, and I put it together the best way I can, send it to JC, and then JC kind of takes it, rearranges it because I usually have it wrong and he's a really good arranger mm -hmm. and does a little bit of other things and then sends it back to me and away we go if it's sounding pretty good then we continue okay and for this album you work with uh, Eric Ratz uh, with whom you already uh, work with yeah this is our fourth it, album with yeah. him producing and w why him well, we have such a great rapport with Eric, and he's such a great producer, first and foremost. But anybody can be a good producer. It's like, can he understand the music that we're playing? Can he get along with everyone? And he che checks off all the boxes. It's what makes you a great producer. Um, and I trust his opinion and where he goes with certain decisions in the studio and it's yielded all these great albums. Mm -hmm. The one album in the middle there, Rock Supreme, was produced by Garth Richardson who's done Rage Against the Machine and Biffy Clyro and Jesus Lizard. We'd heard for years that he wanted to work with us and we wanted to work with him. It's just Garth lives on the other side of the country in Vancouver, even on an island, Vancouver Island. And it's really hard to get to, especially during a pandemic. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say we didn't enjoy working with Garth. It was amazing. We had such a blast. We learned so much and we had such an experience with him. And I would love to do another album with him again. But Eric, it's, it's, it's a wonderful problem to have when you have access to two amazing producers um, who can... Who, who, who want to work with you as well. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's a great problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, if we could talk a little bit more about the, the songs. Uh, so, you, you, you released Who Guessed Back. Who Guessed Back. Guess, Guess Who's Back. back. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, so, but you, you, never, you, you never really stop 
working because during the pandemic you you work on an album right. you made two live stream shows sure so yeah. w- why this title well it sounded good you know yeah. it's a good first and foremost it sounds like a good song and the lyrics are great but then if you if you want to take it if you want to go the literal route and just take it for face value what the lyrics say and apply it to us yeah we put out an album two years ago and we've never really stopped touring and stuff but I guess guess who's back would would me and when I say me I'm back it, it's more of a reminder that like we've always been here mm. you know and we've never gone platinum gone gold but we're always just steadily putting out records mm-hmm. some of them are more forgotten than others but we're never it's for the longest time it's just never been going on an upward trajectory and the moment I announced that we're back this thing took off it's number one in Germany again and people love it and people are singing good time choruses back to us and so you know and also the tour we're doing in November December the venues are expanding and the tickets are selling three four months in advance you know we just got yeah like We just got our first sellout of the of the tour like a couple of days ago, and that's four months in advance. That yeah. never happens to us. That that's kind great. of stuff happens to like Dave Grohl. <laughs> that doesn't happen to us. So so we're happy that it's, it's you know after 27 years of being in this band, it's still going well. You know? mm-hmm. Okay, um, and uh, I really like the the song uh, "She's My Baby." Um, I do too. It's my favorite song on the album. Yeah, uh, but for me, well, all the album sounds like a Dan Cochon's album. Thank you. But I, I think that this one particularly for me. Yeah. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more uh, sure. about this I'd one? I love talking about this song. It's my favorite <laughs> one. So, like Tyler Stewart is the other voice you hear on the yeah. song. He's the drummer of the Bare Naked Ladies. Eric produced. The last couple of Bare Naked Ladies albums, so okay. he had access to them. But more than that, like I've known Tyler for like over 20 years, anyways. Like we're friends, anyways. Mm-hmm. But Eric, we were trying to figure out who can we get to be on this song because it can't be me. Because on the song, it's a question and an answer. And I can't ask myself a question and answer myself back. It has to be a distinguished and a very distinct voice. An accent. And Tyler's got <laughs> such a powerful voice. He's got a sketch comedy background, so he does impressions. And we're friends, and he was cool. And he came down, and it was really fun to hang out with him. He was a really funny guy. And I think the proof is in the pudding of the song. Like mm-hmm. I think his performance is awesome. Yeah. And um, why it's my favorite song is it's like... Like, this is when I don't pick singles because I get really bogged down in the minutia of stuff. So, when we were writing this record, there was a... I was listening to a certain Sparks album, Little Caesar from 2002. And they have a song on that album called How Do I Get to Carnegie Hall? And the, basically, the whole s- song is a call and response. So, the, call, the question is, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? And then the response is, practice, man, practice. And it's like just a bunch of people saying that, answering the guy. So I wanted that call and response like I heard on that Sparks record. And that's why on She's My Baby, it's like, who's that girl who looks so good? She's my baby. And so that was inspired by a Sparks song. Okay. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Okay, and um, so you, you talk about uh, Steve, uh, Stewart, Tyler Stewart, mm-hmm. um, and you have s- uh, some other guests uh, yeah. on the album. Can you tell us uh, yeah, about sure. them and uh, how do you? Yeah, so Damien Abraham, uh, Damien Abraham, the singer of Fucked Up, is on a few songs, and I called him up because we needed people for gang vocals, and he's like a really good friend, one of my best friends. So I'm just like, can you come down and just do this? And of course, he's got such a powerful voice. Mm-hmm. So we need a voice like that on the record. And then he was there. Eric and I just kind of looked at each other and were like, we should get him on other songs. Like, what can we get? Like, right on the spot. So he sang on Stiff Competition. He sang backups. But then on the single Get High, he's actually featured singing back 
we go we do a back and forth at the end of the song and so we just that's going to be the third single off this album or actually the second single and we just finished filming a video for it in Vancouver like last week okay I, like I don't even know what time zone I'm in I've been going <laughs> it's just fucking crazy and um we did we filmed it and I saw a cut of it a few a week ago. I've been living with the cut for a week now. It's awesome. I thought I don't know if how many people are going to get to see it because it's probably going to get banned mm -hmm. off of social media platforms because there's a lot of pot smoking in it. Because the song's <laughs> called "Get High," <laughs> yeah. so like, what do you think we're going to film in Vancouver of all places, where like BC Bud is known internationally all over the world, though. Like how potent it is. We have a friend, where well, Damien introduced me to him. His name is Urban Remo, and he has a pot farm, and mm -hmm. he loves our band. And so we filmed it on his farm, and there's all this marijuana everywhere. It's crazy. So that's hopefully coming out next month. Okay. Yeah. So we'll wait for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's talk about uh, live music. Uh, in 2021, uh, you, you you made two live stream show. Um, it yeah. one for America, one for Europe. Um, yeah, that's what right. what is your feeling and your memory? Uh, what, what 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 feeling and memory do you keep from from these two live live stream show? Uh, it was a crazy time in my life. Um, felt good like kind of dusting off stuff and just playing again but it also felt really weird mm. um, because it was just weird there's nobody in the room the first yeah. time we did it except for the crew and it just felt like I mean why are we doing this we should just quit I felt like we should mm -hmm. just stop this is like beating a dead horse it's like it's really? done Yeah, I really thought it was done, and I had so much going on at home, too, that I just couldn't even concentrate on the day of the show. And then the second time, there was, more, there was actually a little bit of a live audience, like, okay. spaced out. We brought people in, and that felt a little more like a return, but still, I was just not convinced. But I'm glad we did it. It was, like, a great way to... You know, dust off the cobwebs and go for it, and mm -mm. get some semblance of reality again. But you you did it well because I um, I saw the, the European show, and yeah. we didn't feel well, except of your um, your your speech or you said okay there's silence and that's weird. Okay. But when you you played uh, the songs. It was the same energy, and we we feel the limit the, the rage or, or and cool. you, glad, the energy glad, you had. I'm glad because what was going through my head was like, what is going on? Oh, and and I just didn't know what was happening. And it, it was funny because uh, there was uh, the chat. Yeah, and so I remember the chat. Yeah, yeah, and we 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 could interact with other fans. So it was funny to to see people react to the first note of the song. Oh, I didn't say, oh, see that. The, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Like, oh, <laughs> and I didn't see that. It, it, That's funny. We are we were all alone, but uh, together yes. and yeah, it was so. It, yeah. it was weird, but uh, it, was it was nice, nice yeah, for yeah. for was, us. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. It was nice um, yeah. in those moments when mm -hmm. I saw. Uh, when I saw other bands do me, uh, um, live streams, mm -mm -mm. I was like, wow, I don't feel so alone. Yeah. But at the same time, it was just so... It was really fucking with my head because I really thought it was over. Mm. I thought I was starting to really seriously consider getting a day job. Yeah. Right. And Because we're not going to... Okay. You know, we're not getting out of this anytime soon. Mm -mm -mm. And... Uh, You know, I was dealing with, you know, certain family were really feeling it hard and uh, dealing with that. And yeah, it was a mess. It was like the worst time in everyone's life. And then when 2020 was over and 2021 started, I thought, oh, okay, fresh start. No, actually, that was like the worst in 2020 for me. Mm -mm. And then, yeah, yeah, this is crazy. And when you're on stage, you you it's like uh, you you ex 
expose all the the anger. It sure, it's like, very uh, cathartic. If, sure. Yeah, if, if you didn't uh, make music, if you didn't make music, yeah, what job do you? Yeah, do you that's the million dollar <laughs> question. I don't know um, because I was so lucky enough to mm -hmm. find a profession or a career or a job or whatever or just simply an outlet where I could just get all this stuff out. Mm -mm. But I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to rely on this to get... And why is it unending? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it stop? Like, my need and desire to get this rage out, it's got to stop. And I just got to start thinking about things differently okay. and dealing with, you know, I mean, to get personal, I have to start dealing with trauma. Yeah. Because that's what it really is. Mm -hmm. And it'll never end. Mm -hmm. And I want it, I've, I've gotten to a point in my life where I don't want, I want it to end. I want this like thing that I need to get out, this need that I need to get out and I get it out live. I want to be able to just play live and enjoy and not have it be such a personal cathartic experience mm -hmm. every night. Um, I just want to enjoy playing rock and roll. That's what I want. And there's been moments in the last year where I'm just like, I just want to have fun. And I don't want to turn it into this cathartic mess on stage and I realized that in during the pandemic I realized that what people were watching because a lot of people were like how do you do that like you, you, you do this and I thought this whole time I was like well you know I was born to do this this is my God-given gift like an arrogant prick but during the pandemic I realized that what I was doing was putting trauma on display. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that, I was so embarrassed that I did not want to play anymore. And that point. lasted for a few months, not a long time, but I didn't tell my bandmates. They're finding this out as I'm doing this press. But I did not want to play because I found it embarrassing that I was displaying, it was so obvious that it was trauma on display and I didn't realize it mm -hmm. until I had time, to, you know, to do nothing but sit at home and I had the time to like look at it and go, oh my God, this is just trauma on display. Like not only do people suffer from trauma, lots of people have trauma that they're mm -hmm. working through and that is a normal thing in people working, but I am taking the next step and I'm actually putting it on display and I thought that was so gross and I was just like, like I was just so embarrassed. Really? Yeah, and I got over it because I'm like, well, there's other aspects to this. Yeah. There's, you know, you've turned the trauma into a positive thing. It yields positive results. It, look at all the things that you've accomplished over it and look at all the people who like it as well and maybe they're connecting to it unconsciously even. Maybe, the same yeah. way I connected unconsciously to other people's traumas when I watched music bands and stuff. So I kind of, I walked my way out of it because I really didn't want to stop, but I also just don't want to stop this un relentless need to expend and, and be cathartic. I just, I want to just stop that and just enjoy, enjoy playing live because it's fun and rock and roll. We play rock and roll, man. We're not a goth band. Mm -hmm. We don't wallow in our misery. Like we, we, we want to have a good energetic time. And that's what I want to do. And so, like, you know, when I get up on stage, I, like, especially over the last year or so, 
I just want to have fun. And I just want to joke around with the guys on stage, even if it's inside jokes or, you know, just whatever. And if we fuck up, like, we fuck up and laugh about mm -hmm. it. It's, and, and just so, you know, I, but still, still the fire, but not the rage and not yeah. this, like, endless need to, like, get it out. So, yeah, that's the difference, I think. But I, hopefully it'll be very subtle and, and it'll still be... You know, I, th I still think from the response we're getting from all the shows, like, it's still, it's still getting a good response. It's just, it's m my internal, uh, how I approach it is different. Okay. But the end result, hopefully it'll be the same. It's just, it's very, it's very uh, from within, mm -mm -mm. where I'm just, I have to approach it differently. Okay. Just, and it, sometimes it's just like a simple degree yeah. that changes everything, mm -mm. so... Okay, so I hope you will have fun in Paris because you, you are coming in December. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, yeah. it, it will be in a nice and little venue. Um, We've played there before, yeah. so yeah, I know what we're walking into. <laughs> so what do you prefer, a small venue, a big one, or I prefer everything? The, I prefer headlining the biggest venue in every city. <laughs> Who doesn't want to play the arena? I mean, you want to play a sold-out arena, or do you want to play like this 300 cap venue to keep it real, <laughs> man. I, of course, you want to play as, as big as you possibly can. So, I mean, I, I would be lying if I said, no, 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 just keep it at a, <laughs> this little tiny room here. <laughs> Although those are sometimes yield the best shows. <laughs> I mean, I've had the best, what I consider the best shows when there was like, we've played shows where there's 40 or 50 people in the crowd, but everyone is there to get the music. Yeah. And we played this one show, this is years ago, in Wisconsin, on an off night. There was like 40 people who showed up. Really? And every single person who showed up was ready, and they were yelling at the stage, and they were just yelling and trying to provoke me, and, but in a, in a really fun way. Yeah, yeah. And I just took it to like a fish to water and I just started yelling back. We were yelling at each other and everybody <laughs> had a blast. And I walked, I, that show ended and I'm like, that was one of the best shows we've ever played with. And, 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 and same with in San Diego, we played uh, a couple of shows in San Diego, same venue, I can't remember the venue. But certain people showed up, who I don't really know, but they showed up to just heckle me in a good way, like mm -hmm. in a positive way, like, and I, and it was awesome. Okay. Like, I just love, if you're going to heckle me and yell at me, allow me to yell back at you. And if you do, then we're good. <laughs> and you can yell back at me. And, and, and just like this give and take thing was amazing. And it just, everybody has fun and everybody's yeah. laughing and it's, nothing is, It never escalates to yeah. something real. It's, it's just a, like... It's a kind of conversation. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so much fun if someone's like... If we're on the same page and they're yelling at me and trying to like poke at me and I'm poking back, <laughs> it's so much fun. Okay. Um, okay, and um, let's think. Uh, are you still buying a lot of vinyls? <laughs> uh, and uh, we, uh, if yes, um, which one... Uh, what the last uh, one you, you bought? <laughs> yes. I don't know what a lot is. Because I don't spend a lot of money. I don't buy as much as some people do. But I still go out to record shows and try and buy stuff. And I'll go out and buy records and here and there. But yeah, like, uh, um, I can't think what the last record I bought was. Or maybe the last uh, that uh, really... I bought a King Gizzard album. I think I bought their second album recently. Okay. And I bought... Um, I got a record. I was going to buy it, but Loot... The first Lute record, which is a band from Tromso, Norway. Okay. Yeah, they're from Tromso in okay. Norway, and I love the band. The band is incredible, and I can't find their first album anywhere. And so we were playing at this festival in Tromso, mm -hmm. and I was telling the promoter, Look, can you, is there any record stores open? I need to find the first Lute record. And he said, well, actually, the festival... Uh, paid for the recording of that. So we actually have copies left of the first album. I go, really? Because I've been looking. You can't find it outside of Norway, but you also can't find it in Norway anymore. It's like out of print. 
So they got me a copy. It was like the last nice. copy. So, so that's the latest thing. And then, I mean, I just haven't had a chance to, to, to listen to any of them because I've been on, t- like, I've been doing this endless tour now for three months and I haven't been home and it's just crazy. So okay. living out of a suitcase. <laughs> Um, and uh, do you often listen to the Marcel Marceau uh, vinyl you, you bought? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have listened to that whole album. Really? <laughs> yeah, because at the end it's applause. <laughs> at the end of each side, it's just like it's complete silence. But you know you've been through that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, I bought. I, I have a friend who puts on the Toronto Record Show. Like, it's a big record show in Toronto. It's called the Toronto Record Show. And um, when he finds these kinds of albums in his searches, he'll take it, put it aside for me. Okay. So he found that for me, and, I'm, and he's like, look what I got you. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So thank you very much for, for this interview. You. And we hope to, to see you in December in France. Yeah, and I hope that the, every, everyone... We'll listen to Electric Sound, which is right really on. good. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Right on. Hey, this is Danko Jones, and you are listening to United Rock Nations. Ha, ha, ha.